Welcome to CWS Christian Writing and Speaking. I'm your host, Jackie Wilson. And today's guest has been in ministry for close to 25 years. He has a master's degree in pastoral studies and a bachelor's of science in organizational leadership. He is currently the full-time pastor at Timberland Church in Fort Collins, Colorado. A gifted speaker, he is able to reach people of all ages. He is a lover of scriptures and seeks to help people apply the truth of scripture to their everyday life. He is married to Shauna, and together they have three sons and a dog named Cooper. And today we will talk about his book, Christ in the Storm, Keeping Faith in the Face of the Unknown. Let's welcome to the CWS stage, Mr. Dunning Abbott. Welcome, Dunning. Well, hi, Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the introduction, and thanks so much for having me on your podcast. Absolutely. There is so much that is in this book, Christ in the Storm. But before we even get to the book, I want to know about your journey. What led to you writing this book? Well, that's that's a good question. The The book is, uh, it is inspired by a Rembrandt painting. Rembrandt was a prolific artist uh, in the 1600s when he lived, and um, he painted over 300 paintings in his life. But this painting, Christ in the Storm on the Sea of Galilee, is his only known seascape. So that's just a little bit of the backstory to the painting. But the painting itself is a very, it's a very moving picture. There's a lot going on in the in the painting. The, he was inspired to paint this scene from the Gospels of Matthew chapter 8, Mark, I believe, chapter 5, and Luke chapter 8. And it's a story that we all know where Jesus is on the Sea of Galilee with his 12 disciples, and they get caught in a, in a vicious storm. It was such a vicious storm that several of these disciples were fishermen, and they had spent their entire lives out on the Sea of Galilee, and they were fearing for their lives. Through it all, what was Jesus doing? He was sleeping. And uh, so Rembrandt, Rembrandt captures this very tumultuous, chaotic, a very emotional scene in this painting. So I was inspired by the Rembrandt painting. Uh, I've always been a lover of art, even going back to when I was a kid. And particularly uh, this painting is, uh, if it's not my favorite, it's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, and I know you um, had mentioned even in a book that you saw the painting as a kid, but later the painting was actually stolen. And that definitely seemed to have an impact on you. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that the theft of this painting adds an additional layer of intrigue to the painting. The painting was housed in the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in the Fenway District of Boston, Massachusetts. The early morning hours of March 18th of 1990, two bad guys posing as Boston police officers came to the gardener and knocked on the door. And uh, the two security guards inside, they answered the door. And uh, the bad guy said, uh, there's been reports of a disturbance. So going against all security protocol, these two security guards allowed these bad guys to come in. And upon entering the gardener, they informed the security guards, gentlemen, this is a robbery. And they uh, proceeded to tie them up. And for the next 86 minutes, the, these bad guys made their way to the Dutch room. In an hour and a half, they took off with half a billion dollars worth of art, uh, 13 rare works of art, of which this Rembrandt was one of them. And, and all of these pieces of art are still missing to this day. And interestingly, there's actually a $10 million reward for the return of these of these works of art. So yeah, it just kind of, you know, the mystery and intrigue behind all of that adds that additional layer to what I think is a great painting. And you had your illustrator um, create the cover of your book um, with similar elements talking about light and darkness. Why did you choose to do that? The painting, Rembrandt, um, he was a master when it came to art and shadows and, and creating mood and emotion. 
And you can clearly see that in this painting. But in the painting, I, I know your listeners can't can't see it, but in the painting, the, there's a boat. And on one half of the painting, on the top half of, of the boat, uh, there's five sailors, five of the disciples, and they're fighting for their very lives, doing er everything they can to stay afloat. And they, that side of the boat is cast in light. And then the lower half of the boat, where there is uh, uh, seven or eight of uh, other uh, sailors, including Jesus, there that half of the boat is cast in darkness or in in darker hues. And I just always found that interesting. And that's where Jesus is at. And uh, it struck me that, you know, we know Jesus as the light of the world. Why would Rembrandt put Jesus in, in darker hues uh, in this scene? But I, I, I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking about that, but it definitely creates some interesting contrasts in the painting. Because you will always think, almost think that the ones who are struggling are in the darkness and um, Jesus and where the other disciples are is light, but maybe they don't need the light because they do have the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, for sure. And, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, he comes into dark places for sure, right? Including our own personal lives and casts light into the things that need to be, be brought into the light, so. And that's kind of where um, your book really gets into about keeping the faith in the face of unknown. Um, you talk about several different subjects, but one that really struck me is how sometimes we as people feel um, that God is disappointed with us. Can you elaborate more about that? Yeah, for sure. You know, in my own life, I have often felt many times in my life, even to this day, at different times, I feel like God is disappointed in me. And, uh, you know, because of things that I do, things that I say, the way I treat people or thoughts that I have, you know, all the things that we wrestle mm -hmm. with in our lives. You know, I did a lot of research on God being disappointed in us. And what I found is that God isn't disappointed in us. God is our biggest cheerleader. Nobody wants us to succeed in this world and in the, and in the next more than, than our father. You know, he's, he's the one on the sidelines cheering us on and spurring us on to greater things. So God is not disappointed in us. And I feel like many people need to hear that today because this world, it can beat us up, you know? So that that's why I wrote the, that particular chapter. It's just to remind myself and to remind others that God is not disappointed in us. Really, what it comes down to is the enemy is always attacking our minds. For sure. And, and these feelings that we have, it just fuels the attack when we don't remember who God is and who he is in our lives. And so this is why it is important that we keep the faith and that we are remembering the truths of God. What are some of the truths that you remind yourself of to keep you strong when you're facing um, various storms? Just to remind myself that God, uh, that God loves me, that the word of God is truth. And man, in this day and age, we need an anchor, don't we? Because it just yeah. seems like we've got so many things in our ears and in our eyes that are telling us and pulling us in different directions. And, and uh, thank God we have the word of God to go to. So that's, that's another truth. So just reminding myself that God, God is love, that he is cheering me on and that we have his word to rely on uh, each and every day and to help us navigate this crazy life that we're all living in right now. Yeah. And you know, what's so interesting. I think a lot of times people feel like, you're a pastor of a church, you're a leader. It almost seems like sometimes people don't think that you go through things, but you go <laughs> through things so that you can teach the people. I would love to hear your comment on that. Well, it's it's so true. You know, you can never lead anyone further than what where you've been yourself. I know that's kind of a cliche, but it's so true. And, you know, my wife and I, we've been married for uh, 
we're going on 26 years and we've certainly had our share of ups and downs. Um, last year was a particularly trying time in our marriage, but we worked through it. And then of course we have three boys, 23, 17 and 15 and, and they're all great guys, but you know, they're on in, in very unique stages of their lives. And uh, so they have their own challenges that we've had to walk with them through. You know, I've, I've had depression in my life, not, not anything severe, but it's just kind of been a persistent thing through, throughout my ministry career, just kind of rears its head about, I don't know, twice a year or so. So um, my mom died two years ago from COVID. That was completely unexpected. So, you know, I'm, I'm just like everybody else. Uh, pastors aren't immune to the hurts and hangups that affect us all. Yeah. And it seems like we all have those thorns and God uses those thorns to develop us and push us and bring him clo us closer to him. For sure. And, and I think if anybody gets anything from this book, that is that is the theme, I think, from that passage of scripture. Before Jesus and the disciples were caught in the storm in the middle of the, of the Sea of Galilee, a couple hours before that boat was docked on the shore and uh, Jesus invited his buddies to, to let's get on the boat. Let's go out on the sea. And these guys were probably thinking, oh, we're going to go out on a leisurely twilight cruise with champagne and caviar kind of thing. You know, they had no idea what they were heading into. But who mm -hmm. did know? Well, Jesus knew. Jesus mm -hmm. knew exactly what was going to happen in in the very near future. And And here's the thing, is that the disciples up to that point, they had seen Jesus uh, heal the sick, uh, give sight to the blind, uh, relieve uh, people of demons. But for some reason, Jesus, this was a pivotal moment in the disciples' lives in their faith. When Jesus took them in the in the in the boat on the Sea of Galilee, they're caught in this mm -hmm. storm. And for some reason, Jesus needed to lead them through that storm so they could get a greater understanding of who Jesus was. Because up until that point, they had seen Jesus perform all these miracles on other people, but now they were experiencing the miraculous themselves. And I just feel like that was a pivotal moment in their lives. Yeah. And a lot of people look at that scene and say, Hey, but didn't you just see Jesus do all these things? Why wouldn't you believe he would keep you safe? But that is often our reaction. God can have blessed us with multiple things right before a storm. And then we it's almost like we default back to where we were before. But each time <laughs> you go through, you are learning a little bit more about you and your relationship with God. That is so true. I mean, just looking at scripture, we see the the Israelites, uh, God is wants to deliver them out of Egypt and take them to the promised land. And God does this incredible miracle of parting a large body of water so they can cross on dry ground. But pretty shortly after they get on the other side, what are they doing? They're belly aching what? and complaining. God, did you bring us out here just to kill us? We had life was better back in Egypt. You know, they forget. And I just think that's a perfect example for all of us is that we often forget the ways that God works in and through our lives. Yeah, absolutely. I want to read this. This is a quote that you um, took from um, Pastor Charlie Mark in your book. It's, it's toward the end of your book. It says, when life is confusing, even disappointing, and next steps are hard to determine, we can heed the words of the great Apostle Paul and do one thing, press on toward Jesus. And I think that is the important thing that people have to remember is no matter how you're feeling, how it's looking, we have to press on toward Jesus. Amen to that. I mean, what's the alternative, right? The alternative yeah. is we just give up. And, and God certainly doesn't want us to give up and throw in the towel. 
for whatever reason, God allows for trials and challenges to come into all of our lives uh, for a reason. And I believe that reason is to, as we see from the passage of scripture, is to bring us into a closer relationship with him. So we just, we got to keep pressing on. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I just had a conversation with a friend of mine recently and I was saying, you know, I say, every time you seem to hurt, the doctor say, just sit down and rest. But I said, what if we press into the pain instead of resting? What is on the other side? And if we can look to what may be on the other side of things, I think a lot of people will have the better vision as far as trying to move forward. Yes, I totally agree with that. And and of course, the other side of it is that when God brings us through trials and challenges in life, and we, we're on the other side of it, we can look back and we can help other people who are experiencing the same thing and offer encouragement and hope to them. You know, there, there's a couple of gals that I that are co-workers of mine at church, and both of them experienced a rare form of breast cancer. Both of them had the same type of breast cancer, extremely deadly. And fortunately, God, God brought both of those ladies through the, the cancer diagnosis, but now both of them that being on the other side of it is they can help other women who are experiencing the same trials. So yeah, yeah there's, we all have a, an opportunity to extend a hand to others. As the scripture says, we are comforted so we can comfort others. Amen to that. What is next for you? Yeah, that's that's a good question. You know, my my hope is that Christ in the Storm would be book one of a three book series on different works of art. I started working on the second book and then I took a year off because I published uh, Christ in the Storm and then a children's picture book, Stanley the Claustrophobic Miner. I published both of those in 2021. And uh, to be honest with you, just totally transparent, I just got burned out on on writing and the whole publishing world. So I took a good solid year off. Uh, this year, I've uh, endeavored to get back to writing that second book, which is on uh, a completely different painting, but it's based on the book of Daniel. So, so we'll wow. see. It's slow going for sure. How can people connect with you? Well, thanks for asking, Jackie. They can connect with me at donnyabbott.com, D-O-N-N-Y-A-B-B-O-T-T.com. And there you can, uh, I, my wife, my family and I, we support a mission, Cherish Uganda, over in Uganda. And we've supported them for 10 years. So you can read about that. Uh, you can, obviously, you can buy my two books there. And you can check out some of my sermons as well. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. As we wrap up your interview, what is the one message that you want to leave with the audience today? Well, I, th I think a couple of things. Uh, first of all, is I believe that God is a creative God. We see that in, in the world we live in. And uh, because of that, God also instills uh, creation creative juices in all of us. And uh, so I would just challenge people to, to take a look at different works of art, just see how is God uh, speaking through that work of art. So there's that part of it, just come to an appreciation of art. And then secondly, for those who are going through a storm, it could be financial, it could be, you know, work related, relationally related. I just want to encourage you to keep, like I said earlier, just keep pressing on and know that that Jesus is with you. And and the great the great uh, moral to the story in scripture is Jesus wakes up, stands up, turns to the storm and says, peace be still. And then he turns to his followers and he asks them, where is your faith? You know, it's almost like, hey, boys, did you think that I was going to really, I was going to let us drown? And, uh, you know, what I, what I get from that is Jesus obviously was in the boat, in the storm with them. And Jesus is in the storms of life with us as well. Yeah, absolutely. CWS audience, you have heard him. It is time to press in the storm press into the pain 
and move to the other side. You are not alone in your journey. Jesus is with you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. And until next time, beautiful people, God bless. God bless. Thanks.